quick tips uh, our little QuickBooks tip e-newsletter that comes out once a month uh, if you haven't signed up for it because you just found this video on YouTube then go to QuickBooksMadeEasy.com you can sign up to get the newsletter once a month it's very easy so uh, anyway so we are at the end of the year how how am I feeling by the way you might wonder well I don't care whether you wonder or not I'm gonna tell you emotionally I'm fine but physically I've got a little bit of a thing going on in my throat so I'll be coughing um, and clearing my throat through this it's definitely annoying for me and I'm sure it's annoying for you too so I'm sorry about that in advance but anyway we are in February 2014 and it's cold and it's the time for stuff like this right it's also the time for year-end for many of you uh, did you like the way how I segued there anyway so it's year-end for many of you and what I want to talk about in this little month's tip is something called setting a closing date so here's what the deal is after your year ends and you've reconciled all your bank accounts and you've put in your payables and receivables you made sure everything's fine and you give your a copy of your books to your accountant if you give a copy of your books to the accountant you don't want to change anything in the prior year in other words the year is over for 2013 you've given the books to the accountant after you give the books to the accountant you don't want to change anything in your books for 2013 because your accountant won't have those changes and then they'll do a tax return that doesn't match your books does that make sense and so what this set closing date does and you don't have to do it but I recommend that you do it at least every year um, it allows you and I'm gonna push it now to put a date right here and what that does is it basically freezes or prevents you from making any changes on or before this date to your data file and that way uh, you won't change anything after you've given the work to the accountant so basically what I'm saying is I want you to set the closing date and I'm suggesting that you do it before you give the work to your accountant or bookkeeper at the end of the year so that if I'm your accountant I'm not using numbers that are wrong you know in other words because I know the numbers you gave me you're not changing on your end all right now you may decide to set the closing date every month you can set the closing date as often as you like to in order to set the closing date you just click this set date password and we already have a date so the reason why this says December 31 2012 is because that's the last time I set the closing date for this data file because it was a year ago now we're in February 2014 I've reconciled all the bank accounts done all this stuff I want to freeze the transactions on or before this date so I or anybody uh, doesn't go in and change anything and then I can give the work to the accountant you can do this weeks or months or even a year after year end what you want to do is you want to wait till you have all the bank accounts reconciled everything ready to go and then right before you send the work to the accountant or the bookkeeper or before you give the financial statements to the board uh, then you change the date so I'm going to change it to December 31 2013 now what that's going to do <clears throat> is it's going to prevent anybody from changing or deleting anything or adding anything to QuickBooks on or before this date okay let me show you what I mean so I said December 31 2013 so if I go in here and let's say I try and write a check and I'll date the check December 31 13 and I'll just write the check to somebody it doesn't really matter who remember I told you it's gonna prevent you from doing this because it's on or before the date so I'm gonna click Save and there we go okay this modification affects transactions in closed periods and could have in impact your previously filed tax returns okay so are you sure you want to make this change so remember how I told you that it prevents you from making the change I kind of lie it doesn't prevent you it simply simply gives you a warning now what do most people do with warnings they blow them off they override them so what we want to do is put an extra uh, an uh, an extra lock on this thing by putting in a password as well so let me show you what I mean I'm gonna click no here I'm gonna go to company I'm gonna click set closing date I'm gonna click set date password and now I'm gonna put a password in here 
can't tell you what it is. Okay. So now I've got a password in there. So now look what happens when I try and uh, record something on or before that date. Now it must have the password. So that really locks it in so that nobody can change anything unless they have the password. And there may be reasons why you'd want to change something. So they got to leave you the ability to do it, but they just want you to have a password. Okay? Very awesome. Done. Okay? So I think that it is vitally important that everybody that is listening to me right now set a closing date at a minimum at the end of each fiscal year. Okay? And by the way, just as easily as you can set the closing date, you can unset the closing date by wiping this out. You can change the closing date to make it the next year. So you have all kinds of flexibility. You can also change the password. Not a big deal. All right. So that is setting the closing date. And I hope you learned. If you have any more questions, go to QuickBooksMadeEasy.com. Feel free to contact me and sign up for the newsletter. See you next month.